Hello everyone, how's it going? Uh, thanks for tuning in. This is part two of Build Multi-Turn Skills with Alexa Conversations. My name is Justin Jeffress and I am a evangelist at Amazon. I teach people how to build Alexa skills. And uh, sorry about that. I, a little bit of an echo there for a second. Forgot to mute the other computer. <laughs> and I'm here today with Sam. Would you like to introduce yourself? Yeah. Would you like to introduce yourself? Definitely. Uh, I'm Sam Ingbar. I'm a, a solutions architect with the Alexa AI organization. Uh, we've been working hard on Alexa conversations for, oh shoot, Alexa stop. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> I gotta mute that in a second. Uh, and uh, we've been hard at work on Alexa conversations for a little while now, um, but we're super excited to be here and walking through pet match with Justin and I both worked on uh, to help teach everybody how they can take advantage of some of these new technologies. Excuse me while I mute my Alexa. Yes, and uh, Gold Zulu complimented me on my headphones. And so on the last stream, I was noticing I was wearing a different pair and they're kind of noisy. And I noticed that when Sam spoke, the uh, it was picking up an echo. So that was appearing in the, um, the audio. So um, this new machine has doesn't have Bluetooth. So, but I have a like Bluetooth receiver, so I was able to rig these up. And so um, I've been monitoring it and it looks like I'm not gonna be getting any um, uh, echo on this. So uh, apologies for having a little bit of echo in the audio on the last stream. That should be resolved with, with these. So I'm not wearing these to be cool. <laughs> I'm wearing these to uh, uh, you know save, save your ears from echoing. Cool, all right. What are you Justin, just so you know. What's that? Sorry, you kind of cut out there. But it is just, I think we all agree. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I, sitting here and speaking, like these are going to probably hurt my ears over time. So I'm going to have to like rest my ears during the, uh, the, during the stream today. <laughs> cool. All right. Yes. So um, just to give you a little like, um, I guess we'll start off with a summary of what we did last time, and then I'll talk about a few different resources for those of you who are tuning in for the first time, um, and then we'll go right into uh, what we're going to be covering today. Um, and uh, QL Decoder says, uh, will this be on replay? Yes, the video after this will be available uh, on Twitch when you go to twitch.tv slash Amazon Alexa slash videos. Uh, it will be um, in uh, available after here and so uh, the stream that we did on Wednesday or sorry Tuesday uh, is also up on the videos so uh, the last stream went four and a half hours today I don't think we're gonna take that long to get through modules five and six they're a little bit shorter um, we've done the majority of the uh, work that we needed to do in the first session that we had on Tuesday so uh, what did we do on Tuesday well <laughs> on Tuesday, we started off with um, covering the um, tutorial for Alexa um, conversations with Pet Match, and uh, in that tutorial, we went through modules one through uh, four. And the first module, you know, we explain uh, the different concepts of what is Alexa conversation: the, the five build time components, uh, dialogues, utterance sets, slots, uh, API definitions, and responses. So we went through those and talked about how they all come together to form the training data that Alexa Conversations needs in order to be able to do some uh, things for you that uh, you that for the AI to assist you to do those things that you would normally have to do yourself manually if you were in uh, doing a skill with dialogue management. So, for example, uh, context carryover. So, in in an intent-based system. Uh, when you are in the middle of dialogue management and the user says an, an utterance that maps to a different intent, um, it will switch over to that intent. And then when the um, user says something that triggers back the original dialogue management um, based intent, um, what happens is the context doesn't get carried around. You are responsible for keeping that data somewhere and restoring it when you go back to the next uh, go back to the previous uh, part of the dialogue. Um, you know, you're also responsible for like handling what happens when um, the uh, user rejects or confirms or denies a slot or an intent. 
And so there's just a lot of stuff that you have to do. You have to manage the state, the context, the, the, um, the confirmations. You also have to build a really robust model that's going to be able to handle all of the potential ways that a conversation could deviate. It's very natural for conversations not to go out the way that uh, you know, you've pre-written them. I don't know if you've ever done this, but you know, maybe there's somebody that you want to ask a question to or you want to have a conversation with, and in your mind you simulate what that conversation is going to be like, and then you go up to that person and speak to them, and it's not at all anything like uh, what you planned out in your mind. Um, and so it's very much similar to uh, what happens when you are, um, you know, designing a skill? You simulate, you know, what and how the user could speak to it, um, but there's no guarantee that they're going to follow that. And the, that ideal uh, dialogue that represents that conversation is called a happy path or a golden dialogue. And so, um, what Alex Conversations does is it uses AI to predict how the user could deviate from your happy path. And it inflates the model with various ways that um, that, that could happen, and it makes the interaction more uh, robust to unpredicted ways that the that you that you didn't predict because you get the assist from uh, the AI. Sam, do you have anything else you would like to add to that as far as benefits go for using Alexa conversations? I think you really nailed it, Justin. Uh, yeah. Okay. Um, so. We covered that, and then in um, module uh, two, we talk about pet match, and um, actually module one talks about the voice design challenges. Module two talks about the different uh, build time components, and then module three is where we actually start building. So uh, on Tuesday, we went through and we built out the skill, and then we changed the welcome prompt and the hello, the, the help prompt. So. The welcome prompt is what happens when the user says, you know, Alexa, open pet match. Uh, and when you're building an intent and utterance based skill uh, that doesn't have Alexa conversation set as the um, default dialogue manager, what happens is you get a launch request and then your launch request handler handles that request if you're using the uh, ask SDK. Um, with the, excuse me, with, <laughs> The pet, uh, lost my train of thought there. Um, with the, if you have Alexa conversations as your defi default dialogue manager, when the user says Alexa open pet match, the welcome prompt that you define is what greets the user. And the point of the welcome prompt is to give them some context as to what's happening. Uh, so, you know, it says, we, we wrote it to say, welcome to pet match. Uh, I can find the best dog for you. So right there, you know, oh, okay, I'm talking to this skill called Pet Match, and I know what it does. Um, it finds dogs for me, and then it asks a question. And so we wrote that into uh, the welcome prompt. And then we also updated the help prompt, uh, so that way if anyway, partway through the skill, the user says help, <clears throat> it will respond and let them know what their options are. So, um, and then ask them a question to like continue the conversation. So, um, that was module three. And then in module four, we went through and actually did all of the, the building for the skill. So uh, Sam, do you want to talk about what we did in, um, you know, you don't have to go into too much detail, but just a summary of, of what we did in module four. Yeah. So in module four, we started with uh, pretty much a blank skill, plus or minus a few, you know, the welcome response and the help response. And we then went through and added what we'll categorize collectively as the build time assets or the, the different uh, pieces of the different building blocks that will allow us to take a set of dialogues, train our model uh, to understand how it should act uh, in a variety of different conversations at runtime, um, and then added our business logic into the skill code so that when we needed to make a dog recommendation, uh, we could take the user inputs of size, temperament, uh, and energy level, return a recommended dog type, and then feed that into a response to the user. So we took all those pieces, created them, we annotated our dialogues uh, so that we could associate those pieces uh, with the respective parts of the dialogue that they belong in, uh, and then built our model, and we were finally at the end 
uh, able to test our model and see that it was working as we expected. Great, thanks, Sam. So um, in this uh, stream, we're gonna be com covering modules five and six. And so uh, we're gonna be taking the uh, core experience of the skill, and we're gonna be adding on to it. So um, Alexa Conversations out of the box supports context carryover, which is what I referred to earlier. Um, so remember when you're not using Alexa Conversations, if you're in the middle of dialogue management and you go to another intent and then you come back to the original intent that had dialogue management on it, you have to restore the context. Otherwise your skill has amnesia and it forgets everything. It starts over from the very beginning, which is not a great customer experience. And so Alexa Conversations handles that. Uh, and so what we're going to be doing in module five is adding on top of it. So that way we can give the user some context. So let's say they've already, you know, got a, recommendation and the user changes their mind and they say, uh, you know, instead of a large dog, maybe I want a small dog. So they can say, you know what, how about a small dog instead? And uh, what will happen is if we didn't make any changes out of the box, it will uh, recognize that, you know, oh, hey, I got another, I got a new size value and it will uh, call your API endpoint with uh, the new value and your endpoint will return uh, the recommendation and it will give a recommendation. So that works out of the box. But what we're going to be doing here is updating and our dialogue so that way we can say, oh, after changing uh, large to small, I would recommend and then the actual uh, recommendation for, for the dog. So, um, you know, that is really helpful to the user because it gives them some context. And the cool thing about the whole um, thing is that the only change that you have to write is to your front end build time components. You don't even have to update your, your, your back end at all here because as far as your back end is concerned, it just needs to get the data, the input, and return the output. So um, the only change that's gonna happen is in the model. And so yesterday someone asked like, you know, oh, hey, this, this is a lot more involved. There's a lot more stuff I have to do up front. Like, what are the benefits? And so this is one of those benefits because you're, 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 you're training Alexa conversations to handle uh you know the situation based upon the context right um i had this graphic yesterday and i'll bring it up and show it to you i haven't been sharing my screen yet so um let me get that up and then i will bring it over here so you'll be able to see so yesterday i, I uh, showed this graphic quite often or not yesterday tuesday um and you can see here we've got our conversation on the left side we've got Alexa conversations in the middle, and then we've got our skill endpoint, right? So Alexa conversations is trying to figure out, you know, what response to use next based upon the uh, conversational context. And then um, it will call your endpoint when it determines that it has all of the necessary slots that it needs to call those endpoints. And then once it gets a response back from that endpoint, it will use the appropriate response to present that um, data that came back from your endpoint to the customer. So, um, you know, because Alexa Conversation is doing this work for you, uh, when you make a change that doesn't require a change to your backend code, you know, it's all, it's just a matter of collecting the information that it needs to send over there. You don't need to touch your backend, which is, which is really cool. So um, you'll see today that when we're working on module five, uh, it's gonna be a lot quicker and a lot easier to, to build onto it. And so, um, you know, there's a lot of work that we had to do heavy up front, but now that we've done it, we can rapidly iterate and add more to our skill. Um, so um, with that, uh, I'd like to also call to your attention, if you're not already participating or if you were unaware of it, uh, we are running currently uh, with DevPost a, a hackathon, and it is the Alexa Skills Challenge for Alexa Conversations, and there's prize money for uh, submitting. There's prize money for different categories um, that you can apply for, and there's over $101,000 in prizes that can be won. So I would say, you know, take a look at the different categories. On Tuesday, we went through each of the categories and we talked about, uh, you know, potential skill examples for each one. So I would recommend that you go back and take a look at the video uh, that we did on Tuesday if you haven't already. Um, and that would probably be in the first hour. I know it's a four and a half hour video, so trying to scrub through that would be pretty long, but where we talk about those different samples of you know what each category uh, pertains to, that's probably within the first, it's definitely within the first hour, probably within the first 
15 to 30 minutes of that video. So uh, the other thing I want to point out is there is a deadline. Uh, it's September 14th, and we have 24 more, 25 more days until uh, you have to submit your skill for publication and get your demo ready. So, um, you know, 25 days might seem like a long time, but uh, time is constantly moving forward. And so before you know it, you don't have enough time. So I would highly recommend that you take a look at, um, you know, the tutorial and get through it and learn and build and submit your skill early and often. Um, and set some milestones within your uh, skill so that way um, you know you you get to a point where you're like okay I'm happy with this let me go ahead and submit it for certification because it's very rare that the very first time you submit your skill for certification that it's going to be accepted there's usually a little bit of back and forth between you and and the certification team to get everything all uh, worked out so um, I would highly recommend that you do that and then once you get something certified, it's like, well, now you at least have qualified for the uh, hackathon. Um, now you can continue working on it, right? So, uh, and then resubmit it again. And then once you resubmit it, you know, you can, um, you know, work your work that new uh, feature that you've added into your demo. So, um, and I just also want to point out a few different resources uh, that we have. So if you click on the resources tab, oh, you know what? Let me drop the link for this into the chat. I know most of you who are, well, I don't know everyone here has it, but um, I know most, a lot of you do have these links and are very active in the Slack group, which is the thing I wanted to talk about next. Um, if you go to resources, uh, there is a Slack channel for contest participants. I'm gonna go ahead and copy this link and drop it into the chat. So if you sign up there, you can join uh, the Slack group and uh, we have a bunch of different channels and you can go in and ask your tech questions. We also have a channel for teams. So that way, if you're looking to collaborate with somebody, you can collaborate with them. Uh, we also, uh, most of the examples for Alexa Conversations are in Node.js and we created a Python channel and we've got some people on my team who are Python uh, experts. And so, you know, some of those, um, Jeff and Amit are in there answering your Python related questions. Um, so yeah, keep it, keep, keep your questions coming. Uh, and we also do weekly AMAs every Wednesday. Uh, yesterday, Jeff was on answering Python questions and I was in there answering Alexa Conversations questions. So we are tag teaming that AMA. Uh, and then we also have a content calendar of our contest office hours. And, you know, it's not just office hours, it's all of the, um, stuff that we're doing on Twitch. So you can see here we have our, um, our uh, two-part series here, which is, you know, oh, actually that's next week. <laughs> uh, we have our two-part here. So, um, you know, building with pet match. And then next week we're gonna be working with um, Nathan Grice, the author of the pizza reference skill. And we're gonna be going through that over the course of two different streams. So um, with that, um, now I think it, we're about ready to get into um, the Alexa Conversations uh, tutorial for uh, module or for pet match, and we're going to be covering modules five and six. So um, let's do that. I see a question here from Gold Zulu. Do you want to? Do you think we should answer that question now before we get into the um, tutorial, Sam? Um, I think we can do that. But there's a couple in queue here. One from uh, Joel Farholt and one from Gold Zulu. Uh, Let's do that. Maybe while you get things open, Justin, I can take a stab at answering both of them and then we can jump in. I'm going to start sure. with Joel since uh, he did ask first. And so Joel, this one is, I wanted to do this over the stream because this is probably going to take a little bit of back and forth. So don't hesitate to uh, ask follow up questions here. But Joel asks, I was wondering about the purpose of uh, the response condition considering that we define conditions in EPLA of the response template, what is the purpose of this particular uh, function? Uh, that's a really good question, and it is going to be a little, it's tricky to even explain it uh, a little bit, um, especially because of the way that it's sort of visualized. But bear with me and ask lots of questions. So there are sort of two pieces to your Alexa conversations world. There are things that happen at build time to create the model that will get hit by utterances at runtime. And there are things that happen at runtime. Uh, and the APL templates that you are creating, 
have, uh, are involved in, in choosing the right response at runtime. But if you think about creating training data for a model, and if you want to simulate the way that those responses might uh, drive different like sort of conversational functions or those dialogue acts that we talked about uh, last stream, you can simulate that use, using the condition field that you were talking about at build time. So for example, if I uh, have a case where maybe there's some, there's a, there's like, let's say I have a, I have a widget and the widget can take uh, time or date and location uh, values and like store them to do something. But if I have the newest version of the widget, it can take date, location, and time and do something at that more specific moment. And I want to have an API that takes an initial value of date and location and hits my backend. And the backend is going to go and check for this user which kind of device do they have. And depending on whether it's a new device or an old device, I want to come back and I either want to offer, like, like I want to ask the user to provide this optional third argument for my API of the time, or if the device doesn't support time, I want to say, I have everything I need, and I want to ask them to confirm that I have understood them correctly, right? So in one case, the response that's coming, coming back at, at runtime is a confirmation response, and in another case, it is a, it is a you know, request response where I'm asking for inputs. Uh, in, I can differentiate that by creating two dialogues, one where I have a, one of the request use cases and one where I have one of the confirmation use cases. And in that condition box, I can set, say, the condition in which this happens is some state tracking variable I have on my back end uh, returns value A or value B, right? And that's the determinant of when one of those things is going to happen. And that same conditional logic lives in your APL to determine which text response is coming back. Um, but for the purposes of simulating that, that nuance in the training data that will train your model, you can also include it there. So I realized that, especially saying it without any kind of visuals, that's not uh, maybe super easy to just understand in one pop. So did that make sense? Does anyone have questions? I guess so. All right. Yeah. I mean, we can do a follow up, but uh, yeah, go through the says might need visuals. There was a lot that was said and to unpack there, but uh, I think, you know, it's one of those things where the benefit is that you have the ability, you know, in your, um, your backend to have like something that tracks state or uh, something that determines like for example, maybe you have something that's going to check the validity of a value that was given and you could pass back like something that says, oh, hey, that that like say they, they choose some like you have an inventory skill and they choose something that doesn't have inventory um, of that. So there wasn't an error calling your API or anything like that. So it's still an API success. But because that particular item that they're they're asking for is out of stock, you know, you would have some sort of thing that you could pass back into the APLA uh, document to then come back and say, oh, hey, um, you know, that item is currently out of stock. Uh, please make another choice. Your options are, and then give them the options of things to choose from. I think the key of it is it's specifically relevant in cases where different responses are like represent a different dialogue act. Right. Okay. Um, so, do you want to answer Goldzilla's question and then we can start on uh, module five? So, Goldzulu, I, Goldzulu asks uh, sort of a couple questions that I'm going to merge into one, which is how does how do how do we manage or how does Alexa conversations know what response to use for default default Amazon intents like help, uh, stop, um, and and others like that. And what is the purpose of some of these intents, like request more or out of domain? I'm not going to go one by one and explain each of them right now. Um, but in general, those default uh, those default responses 
that you get in an Alexa conversation skill out of the box are going to handle those for you. Whether you need to create those responses yourself uh, or not, it's going to vary a little bit depending on which one we're talking about. And specifically for welcome and help, you're going to need to update those uh, for a certification. The others you probably will not need to touch. Um, I'll talk specifically about uh, out of domain because that's probably the one that you also may want to customize. And out of domain uh, is triggered when somebody says something that the model thinks it's not set up to handle at all. And so uh, you might want to update that response to have some sort of a relevant message that steers the user towards things they can do in your skill. Uh, and assume that this is something that's going to be predicted when really the prediction is nothing I can predict uh, is right. Yeah, you can kind of think of the out of domain response as a fallback intent. Uh, you know, fallback intent works for your uh, interaction model, um, you know, the intent and utterance based system. So you can kind of think of the uh, out of domain as the fallback equivalent of Alexa conversations. Cool. All right. So let's get uh, started on building out uh, module five. So I'm going to go ahead and switch over to uh, desktop view. And uh, for those of you who want to follow along, I dropped the link into the chat, but if, in case you're tuning in uh, now and you don't have the most active chat window, I'll bring it up and paste right into the chat again. So we're going to be starting with module five today. And um, I've got the console open over here and we're going to continue working on the same skill that we had before. So on Tuesday, we created the live code pet match um, skill. So we're going to just go through and edit this. And if you remember, we have our Alexa conversations in the user interface here. If we expand that, we'll have our different dialogues. So we're going to be editing one of our dialogues to be able to enable the user to, well, the user out of the box can uh, like change their mind but we want to give context around what it is that they changed. So if we look here in step one, uh, we're gonna be updating dialogue zero with the following lines. So we'll say, how about a medium, medium sized dog? And then uh, the skill will come back and say, okay, after changing large to medium, I recommend an American Eskimo. So that's the, 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 another, the next like, so you can see like we were able to tell them, hey, this is what you gave me before. This is the new value and this is the new recommendation. So otherwise it would just come back and say that, uh, it's got a Slack message. Um, the, uh, otherwise what would happen, or sorry, otherwise if we didn't make this change, it would still give us a recommendation, but it wouldn't give us that context. So we wanna provide that context because it's helpful to the, to the user. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. So uh, we're gonna go and edit dialogue zero. And if you remember yesterday when we were talking about the, or sorry, I'm gonna keep saying yesterday. When I say yesterday, I mean Tuesday. Um, so um, the, if you remember the day before when we talked about this, that um, you know Alexa isn't actually going to say this. This is a representation of the dialogue. Uh, Alexa Conversations figures out what to use based upon uh, all of the training data that we provide. You know, based upon the context, the different dialogue acts that we've set the uh, responses that we've defined, the prompts that we've defined, all of that stuff determines actually what happens at runtime. But this helps us as humans figure out like, here is the conversation over time. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna update dialogue zero and we're just gonna add these two um, items. So I'm gonna click on the user says button and that'll pop out the next thing. And I'm just gonna go ahead and copy um, Let's see, here we go. Double click on medium. Uh, here we go. How about a medium dog? And I'm gonna paste that in here. And then we're going to mark up and choose the slot. And the great thing about this is we've already created our slot. So we're just gonna choose size and it's gonna update that variable name to be one because we already had a slot uh, above. So if I go up over here, we have size size zero, and this is size one. And in doing so, that's gonna give us the ability to um, track the old slot versus the new slot. So the old slot will be slot zero, and the new slot will be slot one. Now we could go back and edit and change the name of our variable from size zero and, and size one to be something more descriptive, um, but we're just gonna leave it as size zero and size one for now. Uh, and then 
what's our dialogue act? Well, our dialogue act um, is going to be uh, invoking another API. We could be informing here as well, but uh, the, the, the thing that we actually really want to do here, even though we're informing an ARG, the API has already been invoked up here. So we're gonna choose a, invoke again. And uh, what we'll need to do is also set, uh, have a, an utterance set, which guess what? We've already defined our utterance set um, because we used it before. So we're gonna use invoke get recommendation size. And then here's where we map the size to the variable. And uh, if you remember up here, when we informed, we mapped size to size zero because we were inform well, we were invoking, oh shoot, did I choose the right one? Yes, invoke, good. Um, so up here, we were invoking with size and temperament and the variable that we passed to it was size zero. In this case, we don't wanna pass size zero because we're gonna pass the value for that, which would be large. So we'd be passing the same value. We don't want to pass the same value we want to pass the new value so we're going to use size one and then um, once we've done that we have successfully configured our invoke api here and now we need to uh, have the api run so we're going to uh, fix our uh, alexa response here and uh, so what we'll do for this one is paste in the message that we're going to get back from alexa and we don't need to mark anything up. We're gonna click the button to get the panel up here. And in this case, we're gonna choose API success. And we're gonna select an API definition, which will be get recommendation. And then we need to map our variables to our arguments. And uh, what we'll do is we're gonna pass size one as the argument, not size zero, uh, energy, and then get temperament. And then we're gonna get back, get recommendation result one. And we could change this to zero. It would overwrite the value that came back. Um, but you know, if you think about it, what we can now do is we can have, we have two versions of the size, we have two versions of the results. So we could like uh, say, you know, and do a comparison between which dog, you know, and we could also expand our um, sample dialogue here to ask, you know, about the different uh, dogs that have been um, uh, recommended. So what are we gonna do about our response? Well, we still need to update our response. We could choose uh, the existing notify success get recommendation, but we don't wanna do that in this case because um, it'll just come back and say, you know, okay, I recommend, uh, we're gonna wanna change and create a new uh, response. So that way we can come back and you know, inform the user of the fact that, hey, you, you originally asked for this parameter, we're changing it, you've changed it to this one, and here's the result of changing that. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit save, um, and we're going to create a response. Now, if you remember yesterday when we created our responses, we went over to the responses uh, UI and actually created, created it there. In this case, we're gonna go ahead and create the response in line. So, um, I'm going to go create new response and then this uh, dialogue will pop up and um, we're going to uh, change the name or set the name of this to notify success get recommendation context carryover. It's a nice descriptive name that explains the intent of what we're doing here. Um, and then what we're going to do is, um, let's see, yeah, it's better to create the argument first so that way we can refer to it. So I'm gonna scroll down to the arguments, click on add an argument, and we're gonna name that argument old size. And then this is going to be a custom slot type of size. And we're gonna add another one. This is gonna be new size. And then this is going to also be a size type slot. So what we're doing here is we are able to track the old size and the new size. So um, when we map the variables from the sample dialog, uh, old size will be mapped to size zero and new size will be mapped to size one. So, um, you know, like that's the, another good thing about this is you can like name the different uh, variables and things relevant to their own thing. So one way to keep track of everything and make sure that you understand where everything is going and how things are mapped is using the same names for everything. So we could actually go back later if we wanted to and, and rename that variable from size zero to old size and new size. But if, you know, partway through the interaction, size zero isn't really old size in the beginning, it's the original size. Um, 
And so I, I'm going to say we'll just leave it as size zero and size one in the dialog, but change it to what they actually are in this template. Um, so I've added the two arguments. We're not going to use a visual response, but we are going to uh, create the uh, prompt. So to do that, Oh, did I? Oh, okay. I'm sorry. I missed another argument. <laughs> we need the actual like response that comes back. So this is going to be uh, the get recommendation or the recommendation result, and it's a get recommendation. So this will allow us to say, you know, um, you know, you after changing old size to new size, we recommend, and then the uh, recommendation dot name which is the name of the uh, dog breed so okay i almost skipped an important step <laughs> so uh, now that we've done that we're going to define our audio response and um, the ui has been updated so we're going to go ahead and um, fill in through here so we're going to change the name to prompt notify success get recommendation context carryover. And uh, what we'll do is, I'm gonna go ahead and hit save here, although that's hard coded, and then we'll replace the values with what they need to be. Uh-oh, something went wrong while updating. APL name field. All right, let's uh, click edit audio response. What were you gonna say, Sam? Hello? Uh, it, it has the name. Uh, I thought I had a period at the end of my... Um... It's showing here as the named item. Uh, let me click save here and then hit the pencil and clear this and I'm gonna Make a change. Is it the period at the end there? If you go to the top. It, it, it might have. Uh, which period? Oh, uh, yes, yes. That's what I think it is. Dave. Yeah, I think you're right. It was that, that period. OK, I think we fixed that. So now what we need to do is just double click on these and choose the, the variables that they need to be called or the slots. So we're gonna change that to old size. We're gonna change this to new size. And then we're going to choose the uh, name. And you'll notice here, it automatically recognizes that, hey, recommendation result is a slot with properties. So it then expands the properties that are associated with it. So we want to say what the name is, which is the breed that we've recommended. So we'll just select that. And you'll notice now we have Okay, after changing old size to new size, I recommend and recommendation result dot name. So that's great. We've got that. So I'm going to go ahead and hit save. Um, oh, but actually, before I do that, you'll see how we have a n here. Uh, this could be different depending upon whether or not this starts with a variable or, or not a variable, a vowel. <laughs> Wrong V word. Um, so. Um, you know, we could actually do some work in our back end or even with the APLA document to choose uh, the appropriate uh, A or AN here um, based upon the value of this. Um, I'm not going to do that right now, but that's something, an improvement that we could make. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and hit save. And then I'm going to save here. And now that this has been selected, we now need to map what old size, new size, and recommendation are from our variables. So earlier, remember I was talking about up here, we have our large family, which is size zero. So this is our old size. And then size one is our new size. So we're gonna map size zero to our old size. We're gonna map size one to our new size. And recommendation result is going to be uh, our second result that came back. So that's gonna be recommendation result one. And now we're almost done. We have one more thing left to do. If we were to save and build this, it would fail to build. And the reason why is because we, we haven't associated this new response with the API. So I need to click on the pencil here. And you can see in this responses dropdown, 
we can select our new notify success get recommendation context carryover and press this plus button don't forget to press plus uh, and it adds it to that and once we have done that and we've clicked save now we should be ready to go and I believe that's all of the steps I kind of skipped ahead as we went through but yes we are now at the point where we can click save and we can build and so since it's going to take a little bit of time to build uh, let's open it up for Q&A while that happens but um, if we run into any build errors we can live debug them um, but uh, yeah let's open it up for questions so if you have any questions just you know paste them in the chat Oop, we got a error what happened um, probably has to do with that period that I had let's see please review details and separate error message due to intermittent issues give it, give it a second yep it might take a second to pop up here we go Get recommendation result one is not declared, but assigned to an argument recommendation result for notify. Okay, so it should be declared. Check your API call on the last line. Oh, look, it got bumped to two here. Yeah. So we'll set that to zero or to one, and then that should be one, okay. So that may that might have happened when we added the period to the end of the prompt. The UI was trying to assist us and bump the counter up, I think. Yeah. So we have a couple questions in the chat, Justin. So I'm going to start running from the top while building. Uh, first, we have oxygen box. Uh, oxygen box. An oxygen box asks. Uh, successful use of utterance sets seems to be uh, seems to intend to address every possible sequence of like user dialogue, uh, and so the question is: Is there a way to gently handle what occurs if I accidentally miss or skip the sequence? Would fallback intent apply here? Uh, this actually relates to the out domain intent we were discussing earlier, uh, and the answer to this question is worth remembering. Just like most things in Alexa conversations, you're dealing with a non-deterministic system. And so it depends how far or close from other utterance sets these, this particular uh, sequence or dialogue input is. So if it's very similar to something else, it's possible that it will get uh, sort of lumped into that other utterance set for better or for worse. Uh, but in other cases, uh, especially if it's not too, too similar to an existing utterance set, um, then what's probably going to happen is is it will be predicted as out of domain, and that's where that out of domain response uh, is going to get triggered and played. And just like Justin said earlier on in the call, uh, out, that out of domain response is is the kind of Alexa conversations equivalent to your fallback intent in a custom skill. Next question is from uh, from Joel Farvald, and it is: Can we change the value of the slot in confirmation for uh, the API? Sorry, it just it's, uh, happening. Additional additional context. For you want second? Yeah, earlier um, I accidentally muted myself, and um, so what I was saying was when you see these uh, that the model is training, uh, there are no other build uh, failures that you expect. So at that point, it's okay to walk away and leave it unattended. Uh, when it's still building, you know, there's possibilities that there might be a build error that would pop up. So 
um, you, you want to sit and wait till it gets to the training model because you know you might have to like um, go and address one of the build errors that comes up. But once you get into the training model phase, there's no more build errors that could possibly pop up and prevent it from finishing. So at that point, you can run off and and get a cup of coffee or um, you know answer some emails or do something. So cool. All right, uh, Sam, do you want to get to the other question? Uh, I, I think there might be a, can, can you guys hear me? I think there might be a sound issue. There, I think you were kind of cutting out before. I think there was some, you were experiencing some packet loss, but I think in your last response, it sounded good. Let's see what people say in the chat. Can you hear Sam? Can you guys hear me? Yep, all good. Cool. Okay, so uh, I'm gonna circle back to Joel's question. Uh, I'm going to answer this a little more generally. I think I'm understanding the context here, and the general answer should apply. Um, and I think this is kind of the question. I'm, I'm going to summarize it: is you know, what can a user do and not do if I have sort of a confirmation step, and can I sort of nudge them to change certain values if I have like a recommendation uh, for 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 them? And I, the way I'm imagining this, at least, would be like, hey, almost like a recommended address. Or uh, sure, we'll go with that. Um, and the answer is definitely yes. And the way you're going to want to annotate that is using the built-in uh, notify six. Either there's a couple ways you can do that, but basically you can either use the confirmation prompt, uh, or you can use sort of which I was referring to in the chat earlier today. Sort of an advanced technique we'll learn about with Nathan next week called daisy chaining to offer a next API. But in any case, the text that you provide can nudge them to say, hey, did you want to say A instead of B? Or do you want to proceed or something like that in order to nudge the user to change their input? But the user can, of course, say, actually, yes, I want A, uh, and make a change to those values before you call your API using confirmation features. So I hope, I hope that helps and answers the question. Uh, I think it does. Anything to add, Justin? Uh, no, I think I think you summed it up pretty well. Um, we we had the on the getting back to the training of the skill. The light build was successful, so we're getting close to the last phase. So we'll be able to test very soon. Uh, and one thing I want to point out, uh, you know, we haven't had to make any changes to our backend code. So once this finishes training the model, we're okay to test. And so this is one of those things like you know, yesterday it took. You know, or Tuesday, it took quite a while to get through building all the different components. But in this case, we reused all the components except for one. We had to add one new response template. And then in doing so, um, you know, we're able to, you know, provide that context. And we didn't have to write a single line of code to do it. If we were doing something like that in dialogue management um, without Alex conversations, there's a lot more work that we would have to do. Uh, we would, first of all, have to have, you know, some way of keeping track of the previously collected information and so uh, some of that like would be you know saving it into persistent attributes or session attributes you'd have to then like check and see like oh, okay i already have some session attributes and i know what the previous match is because once that's the other thing is once you've given a successful like dialogue management has completed the information gets flushed so you don't have that anymore so you'd have to save that and then if the um, user said like, oh, how about a small dog? Then you'd have to go, when you hit the dialogue management uh, based intent, see, oh, I already have a previous recommendation. Now I've got this new value. I need to then in code, swap out that value, send it to the API, uh, get the information back, um, and then format it and give them that context. So there's a lot more work that you would have to do, a lot more code on the back end. So, um, you know, the, the difference here is that we didn't have to write any code. We just told Alexa Conversations, hey, here's another possible way that the conversation could shake out as soon as, you know, you know. so it's like the, the customer could actually, out of the box, you get the ability to, um, you know, uh, correct and change. Um, and so in this case, what we wanted to do was give uh, some context. And so in giving that context, all we had to do was, um, create the um, uh, 
that new response template and another variable to capture that information. Uh, just, uh, okay, says, uh, are you guys uh, who created Alexa? No, I did not create Alexa. Um, I only, uh, I, I work on Alexa and I teach people how to build Alexa skills, but I did not build. So, cool. <laughs> Me either. <laughs> Cool. All right. Our model is still training. Do we have any other questions? Um, keep your questions coming. We've still got our model building here. Um, let's see. Very shortly, we'll be able to test. <laughs> Gold Zulu, no more four hour streams. <laughs> About, um, well, yeah, we can, we can take a minute. Uh, if there's other questions, go ahead and ask them. Uh, we've got probably a couple minutes. So. Yes, I'm out of water. I'll be right back. <laughs> Okay. All right, cool. Maybe we just got a full build. Oh, cool. So the build just finished. So let's go ahead and test this out. So, um, oh, you know what? I should have, you know what? We'll do this on the next one, but I want to change the invocation name um, to be dog match. So we'll, I'll remember to do that when we do uh, models, module six. So, all right, let's go and dismiss that and i'm going to say open pet match welcome to pet match i can find the best dog for you what are the two things you're looking for in a dog okay large guard dog would you prefer a high energy dog or a low energy dog? I'll go with low. I recommend a borzoi. Now I can say, how about a small dog? Okay. After changing large to small, I recommend a beagle. So that's pretty cool. We were able to, um, you know, get that response to provide us some context from what we changed without having to make any backend code changes. It all took place in the model. And so you can see it was much, much easier to expand on our uh, skill once we have built out the, the core functionality of it, right? So, um, you know, yesterday there was a lot of like creating the sample dialogues, the uh, utterance sets, uh, the response, the responses, the um, API definition, and the slots. And so today, you know, since we already had all of that stuff built out, we only had to just uh, modify our sample dialogue, um, add a new response template, and then annotate. Uh, and in doing so, we're able to do that um, comparison or, um, and set the context around what just happened um, very simply. So, um, that's really, really cool. Sam, do you have anything you would like to add? No, I think it just uh, really illustrates uh, sort of how much s simpler this was to do now that we've laid that foundation, right? Um, you can kind of reuse so much that it becomes very quick to add some of these features that might otherwise be a lot more complex. And... Cool. All right, so I'm gonna, uh, we're gonna move on to module six. So module six, 
we're going to learn how to add another API to our um, our skill. So in this case, we're not going to collect another slot and pass it to the new API, but you can definitely do that. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and drop this into the chat. And um, here we go. So uh, what we're going to be doing here is once the uh, skill comes back with a recommendation, you know, the user might say like, well, what is a beagle or uh, what is a borzoi? I don't know what that is. Tell me some more about it. So we're going to give the uh, option to, um, you know, in context say, oh, what is that? And it'll know. And um, the cool part is that this is another one of those context carryover pieces that Alexa Conversation is going to handle for you. It has already um, captured what that response is. Uh, so the user can then quickly just say, you know, what is the what is that? And you know, once we annotate our dialogue, we'll have Alexa Conversations pass the recommendation that it previously received into uh, or to our skills backend that has the uh, get recommendation. Actually, we're going to create a new API called get description. It will pass it to that. And then in doing so, we'll look up what the description is, pass it back to the skill, or sorry, to Alexa Conversations. And Alexa Conversations will pass it to a new template that we're going to create and speak that response back. And so if we were to do that with dialogue management without Alexa Conversations, because after the, the recommendation is, uh, is complete or the, the intent with dialogue management is complete, the previously collected information is forgotten, it's up to you in your backend code to store that match. And then if they say, what is that? You have to then check to see, um, you know, like how to get the description for that. And you also have to be careful in that sense. What if they say it out of order? What if they say, what is that at the very beginning of the skill before you have even provided a recommendation? So you'd have to have some code that, that would check and see, oh, hey, they've, I've never given a recommendation. So I need to you know, direct them to give me some, um, some information in order to be able to find them a recommendation. And so with Alexa Conversations, uh, it's going to take care of that stuff for you automatically because it's taking, uh, keeping track of the conversational context for you. And so um, that's another, like one of those benefits that you'll see uh, here is that we're able to, uh, you know, focus uh, in the user interface here on building out the interaction that the uh, customer and the skill are going to have uh, rather than thinking about how you're going to keep all of this stuff up in memory. Um, and you know build it on your back end so there's less uh work you have to do in your back end code so um i'm gonna before we go into module six i said i wanted to do this i want to going to change the inner invocation name from pet match to dog match and what we'll have to do remind me when we go to test this we're gonna have to uh, deactivate the skill and reactivate it in order to make the um, invocation name change uh carry over um, so I'm going to go ahead and do that. And so now what we'll do is go back over to the Alexa conversations and we're going to update our sample dialogue and we're going to do this in dialogue one. And, um, the other one we, we changed in dialogue zero, we could go back into dialogue zero and change and add this. What is that, uh, to dialogue one, uh, sorry, dialogue zero, um, but uh, we're going to do it here. Now, Sam, is there like, um, you know, are these, I'm going to ask you a question about this. So, and hopefully this is the same question that everybody watching is uh, having. But if I update my sample dialogue in dialogue uh, one, but let's say in dialogue zero at the end here, um, after giving this recommendation, after we've changed what was originally asked for, if I say, what is that? What's going to happen? Does it matter that I didn't add that sample to this dialogue? It shouldn't, no. And you should be able to, you know, as long as you have some examples of the behavior that you want to see, you don't need it in every, like you shouldn't need every example to do everything, if, if that makes sense as an answer. Right. Uh, you, to make sure you have a, an indicative sample of the behaviors you want so that there's something for the model to learn from. Cool. Yeah. So essentially what's happening is, you know, even though we've added it to dialogue 
uh, one, we could actually, after this match, say, you know, okay, well, what is that? And then if uh, we don't like the description, we could say, oh, how about medium instead? And then it gives us the res uh, a recommendation. We say, oh, well, what is that? We could get that description. So we'll demonstrate that once we've built this out. But um, uh, that's one of the cool things about this is that, you know, your these dialogues act as training data, but they're not silos. And so, um, as Sam said, as long as you've created that that representation of how the conversation could um, shake out, uh, it shouldn't matter. Like again, these aren't silos. Uh, Alexa Conversations is going to look at these things as the whole and try to figure out the best place to put and and best way to respond to what the user said. So let's go to dialogue one, and I'm going to add a new user says, and it's going to be. Um, what is that? Let's see. Okay. And then we're going to say a chihuahua is. And one thing that um, you'll want to make sure that you're doing here is your if your OS changes the dots into an ellipsis, um, that will cause a build failure. So I just back this out and made sure that these are three dots. You can actually get rid of it if you want. So I'm just gonna get rid of that. We have some pending changes to the to the page here. Um, I submitted those changes to get, to get fixed. There's a few typos and things. Um, the team that is uh, managing these updates is busy working on some other high priority things and um, these will be updated at some point. So I apologize for the, um, the some of the typos and things that we have in here. So, okay, so now that we've done that, now we need to uh, create a new slot type um, because we need to be able to um, capture our get description result. So this is going to be a slot type with properties. So, and that's gonna be um, what we return back from our new API that we're gonna need to define, which is a get description API. So I'm gonna go back now over here to the slot types and I'm gonna say add a slot type and we're gonna call it get description result, and it's a slot type with properties. Get description result. And the property that we're gonna add, we're gonna use that string literal here, which is that dummy value. And the name of this is going to be description. It used to autofill with prop zero now, but now it just is blank. So we have description. And then we're gonna say, this is string literal. And I'm gonna go ahead and click save. So that is our um, our slot. And now for the rest of the time, we're gonna make all of our updates uh, to the dialogue and do all of our creations in line. If you remember on Tuesday, uh, we went to each one of these uh, screens here and like um, set up everything in advance and then we annotated. And this uh, uh, module, we're actually just gonna go through and create all the necessary things aside from the slot type in this user interface. So we don't have to keep jumping back and forth. And that was part of the idea of the training uh, tutorial is to get everybody set up uh, and learn how to use the user interface in multiple ways. So that way you can decide, um, you know, the best way that you want to use it. So what makes sense for you? So uh, we're gonna create our utterance set now. Um, and so we'll go and select our, what is that? And um, we're gonna select What's going on here? Well, we want to invoke an API, and we're going to invoke the um, uh, the get description API that we haven't created yet. But that's okay. We're going to create our utterance set. So, since we, um, you know, normally it, it, yesterday all of what we did was since we created we pre-populated um, our utterance sets by going to the utterance sets section of the UI and uh, creating them. Uh, Today, so we selected it. Today, we're going to go here and uh, select the create new utterance set, and the modal will pop up. And so, what we're going to do is we're going to say invoke get description, get recommendation results. And oops, I left off the I. And so, this is going to invoke an API, and we don't have a new API yet, so we're going to leave that blank. Um, and we have a bunch of different uh, utterances. These are the different various, various ways that a user could say this. We could type each one of these in and hit this plus button, but we're gonna use the bulk editing tool. So if I click on this and paste it in, 
and hit submit, you'll see now it's populated this list with all the different um, things that we've come up with uh, that the user could possibly say, hey, what is that? Um, and uh, this is another thing to, to be aware of is uh, there is an apostrophe here and you just wanna make sure that your OS or browser didn't convert this into a smart apostrophe because that will cause a build error. Um, and so um, that looks like a normal apostrophe to me, but I'm just gonna go ahead and change it and make sure it's fine. Uh, I think at this point we're ready to hit save. Yes, okay, hit save. So now we have, and because we had it created, it automatically selected it for us, which is nice. Um, so now we need to go and create the get description API. So we could click on API definitions and uh, do it through here, but we can do it in line. So I'm gonna select the Alexa says dialogue, or yeah, line of dialogue. And this is gonna be an API success because we're reporting back, you know, what came back from our API. So now we need to create the API to invoke. So in this case, we're going to select from the drop down, create new API definition. And here we're going to name it get description. And then we will create our arguments. And our argument is going to be the recommendation result. And, you know, this makes sense because we're taking the uh, recommendation result, which includes the name, the dog breed that we want to give a description about and we are going to um, um, pass it to the uh, to that API and then the API is going to grab the recommended breed information and uh, give back the description. So we're going to go ahead and set that um, and then it's going to return that new slot type that we just created which is the uh, get description result not get recommendation result because this is our get description API and then we need to create a new response. So we're going to do that. Um, have I, hang on, bear with me for a second here. Oh, I see, we have you save and then we, okay, yeah, I'll go ahead and click save. I'll add the response in just a second. So then we have you map the um, variables. So let's do that. So I'm going to click on the expansion on one. Um, so I'm going to set these. So this is going to be recommendation result zero that we're going to pass here. And then our description has already been uh, mapped. So we're going to set the description result to that. So now that we've done that, we're going to um, go back and edit our get description API to um, our utterance set to map to the, um, the new API that we didn't have before. So if I click back up on the previous line and I hit the pencil, you can see now we can select get description here. So now that we've saved that, now this is going to invoke the get description API because we've uh, selected it here. If we forget to go back and select this, you'll get a build failure. You know, it'll say like, oh, you're trying to invoke an API, but we don't know which API to invoke. Um, so we need to make sure that you go back and do that. But now that we've got that, we're gonna go ahead and create our response. So let's go here and select create new response. And what we'll do is name that notify success get description. And then we will name uh, okay, we'll add the argument first. And again, this used to pre-populate with arg0, but now it's empty. So we're just gonna put description and we're going to say get description result from the dropdown. And then we're going to now set our uh, audio response. Um, and we're gonna name this should be I think it's notify success get description yes it's right here cool and what we're going to do is we're going to replace a chihuahua is with 
description dot description. So this is going to take the description uh, that is part of our description. I know it's kind of redundant, description description. So this is the, the argument that we named it, which is the get description result. We could actually name this get description results, and then it would be get description result dot description. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and hit save here. And what's gonna happen? Oh, did I get another period at the end? Uh, Let me uh, figure Maybe out. Copy it in. Yeah, it might have been from the copy paste. Is there a space at the start? Don't see one there. Don't see one there. Not at the end either. Hmm. All right. Well, I'm going to keep moving. And if we run into a build time error, we can try to fix it then. Um, so then now that we've defined the uh, response, we're going to set the variable that it needs to pass to it. So we'll set that. And I'm going to go ahead and hit save. And uh, there's one more thing that we need to do. We need to go back and edit or edit the uh, description API and add the uh, response template to it. Because right now we don't have a response template. So uh, if we edit the API, you'll see there's no responses. So if we tried to build right now, it would fail. So we're going to say notify success get description. Oops, I forgot something. <laughs> Um, you have to press that plus button. So press plus, and there we go. Now we have our notify success get description. So I'm gonna save that. I'm gonna go ahead and click save up here one more time. And uh, now that we've done that, I'm gonna go ahead and click build, and then we have some backend code changes that we have to make. Hopefully we don't have any problems as a result of uh, me copying and pasting stuff into that response template. But if we do, we can live debug on air. So let's see. All right, it's training the model. So um, I think just like clicking in there and doing some stuff cleaned off whatever it was that um, was causing that initial error. So let's go ahead now that we're training the model, go and modify our code. So we need to make a few more changes here. So we've defined a new API. So now we need a new handler in our backend to handle the requests that come into that API. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a get description handler API. And our, the way how our um, API is going to work or our handler is going to work, so we have a can handle and a handle function. And our can handle function is going to look to see if the type of the request that comes in is dialog.api.invoked. Uh, and then if the name is get description, which is the name of the um, API definition that we defined over in our Alexa Conversations uh, front end. So we're going to create um, this, this uh, can handle that's going to return true, meaning that, hey, I can handle this request if it's a uh, API invoked and if it's uh, the name of the request is get description. Uh, and then we have some backend code here that's going to actually look that stuff up. I'll explain what this does once we actually get it into the code. So I'm going to go ahead and copy the stub and I'm going to go right above the get recommendation API handler and just paste in the get description API handler. And then I'm going to copy this code here, which does the return true if the, um, the dialog.api invoked is the type and get description is the API request name. So the way how this works is, um, you know, all of these handlers check to see the incoming requests, or actually the SDK hands it off to each um, of the 
um, of the handlers in order, and then whichever one returns true first uh, in that sequence uh, gets to handle the request and nothing else handles it afterwards. So it doesn't matter what order we define the handlers here, but it does matter the order in which we register them here. So you want to put your most restrictive check first and your least restrictive check at the beginning. If you had a, a handler that just did this, return true, and if it was the first one in the list, then none of the other handlers would possibly be able to handle the request that comes in because this one would be the one that always says, yes, I can handle every request that's sent to me. This so. To correct you, Justin, on a minor arm misspeak. Sure. Most restrictive first, least restrictive last. Not Sorry. Yes. That's what I meant to say. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks for catching that. Um, cool. Okay, so we've pasted that in. And now what we need to do is uh, update the body. So what's going on here? So first, oh, actually, you know what? Let me paste it in. I'll reformat it and then talk about it because this will be nice and um, it'll have code highlighting. So the first thing that we're doing here is we are going through the request envelope and we're accessing the arguments and we're getting the recommendation result. Uh, and then what we're doing is we're just setting up a default response um, in just in case we don't find anything, but we should, uh, but that's just to make sure that like um, because what's going to happen is we're, we're passing a result that comes back from uh, an API. Um, so this value should be here, but it's good to have just a fallback in case. But the likelihood that this is going to come back empty is, is pretty much, uh, you know, I wouldn't say impossible, but it's near. But from a coding standpoint, it's... It's a best practice to have a fallback just in case something isn't uh, defined or something happens unexpectedly. Uh, and then what we're doing is for each of the uh, recommendation results items here, we've got our energy, size, and temperament. We're going to grab each one and we're going to build up the uh, size. We're going to build up a key. And if you remember, in the um, uh, petmatch.json file, each one of our recommendations here is mapped by our key. So we have energy dash size dash temperament. And so we're just building that up uh, here. And then we are looking up what the uh, value for that key is. And then we're going to grab the description and return it in this, in this description entity. And so then we have a custom function called build uh, success API response, and we just pass the description entity to it. And that's just going to wrap the response into the appropriate JSON that needs to come back from our skill. So if I look at the build success uh, API function, all it's doing is just returning this uh, API response colon and then the entity that we passed to it. So um, we have added in the new handler. The last thing that we need to do is register it. So if I scroll down, um, it doesn't matter if I put this first or if I put it after because these handle this one. They both handle the case where the request is dialog.api.invoked, but the recommendation API handler handles only get recommendation uh, APIs named um, get recommendation, get description only handles APIs named get description. So it's okay. It doesn't matter which order that we put them in. Um, so we're just going to do it like that. And I think at this point we're ready to, yep, I got that warning there. Don't forget to register. <laughs> so we'll hit save and then we'll hit deploy. And while that's deploying, I'll check the model. So it's still training and don't let me forget that we're gonna to need to go to the test tab, deactivate the skill and reactivate the skill. So that way uh, we can use dog match as, or yeah, dog match as the um, invocation name. So at this point, while we're waiting for that to happen, 
you know, if you have any other questions about Alexa Conversations, the content that we've covered so far, anything in general, just, uh, you know, ask away and we'll, we'll answer. While that's happening, I'm going to see if I can, I've been noticing some like audio feedback from, not really feedback, but just uh, noise on Sam's audio. And so I'm going to see if I can put in a filter that will get rid of some of that. I'm just going to start asking you questions, Justin, if, if uh, there's no other questions. Sure, yes. Ask away. So um, maybe one thing we could do while this is building, and this might be more than uh, we can fit into this, this small window, is talking about, now that we have some visuals up, maybe coming back to that response condition and talking about why maybe some of the cases that we have in our skill wouldn't need it. Or like when maybe coming up with a quick example of sometime when you would. Okay. But I don't know if that's that's. Oh, we have some questions now. Hold up. Um. Oh, that's a small one. But does training time decrease after the initial build? Uh, no, it doesn't. Unfortunately, it will be pretty consistent across the board. From oxygen box. Yes. So what I was specifically thinking, Justin, is if we talk about the case of like uh, where you have, I recommend A versus I recommend an, you know, where it's based on the vowel of the name of the dog, something we sort of touched on earlier. Maybe talking about why that isn't a use case where you would use response condition and what might be is what I was specifically thinking we could talk about here. Okay. That makes sense. I'm happy to talk through it if you if you want, but I think what we could do to make that helpful is if we just flip over uh, to the response that we were looking at earlier. The uh, get description response? Yes, so. Uh, do we want to look at the APL or? Yeah, that's fine. So, um, oh, sorry, not get description, the uh, the previous, the one where we, where we, uh, where we, where, we where, we can change. where we provide context? Yes. The pre, I think dialogue zero, right? Yes. Yeah. So this, this, uh, if we look at this response, um, just pop that open for a second in uh, the APL editor. So if we look at the response we have here, let's take a, a couple of hypothetical situations. Um, the first one is going to be we, which is one we've already talked about, where we want to say, okay, after changing old size to new size, I recommend a payload.recommendationresult.name for dogs where the name doesn't begin in a vowel. And for dogs where the, the name does begin in a vowel, we want, I recommend an payload.recommendation name the, the right. recommendation, right? So that's sort of conditional, conditional statement one or conditional set one. Uh, if we flip over back to the developer console, uh, and and you know we ask the question, well, when I'm annotating this, is it appropriate to use the response condition in that situation? The answer is no, uh, and the answer is no because whether we say I recommend a dog or I recommend an dog. The dialogue act of that response is the same. Uh, we are functionally, if we zoom out a little bit, we are saying this API call succeeded, and here is response template get recommendation result, which is notifying you as a user that the that the request has been successful, and here's what we found. Does that make sense, Justin? Yes, it makes sense. Great. So. Whether that sort of surface form is one or the other, it's the same function. Now let's look at a second hypothetical case where uh, they, 
I'm trying to think of an example, maybe Maybe let's say that for certain dogs, we have two different sources of a description. Mm -hmm. And for some dogs, we only have the one. And mm -hmm. so we want to, in our APL logic to either say, here is information about your dog if we have one source. And if we have multiple sources to choose from, we want to actually ask the user, uh, which source would you like to here, which source would you like to use to, to find this? Um, and we add source as an optional variable to our uh, get recommendation API. In that case, right, we have a second conditional clause, and one is uh, responses that ask the user to inform us a value for source. And the other is a set of clauses that say we call the API. It was a success, and here's the result. Um, in either case, we're still calling the API, but uh, based on some state variable, right? let's call it uh, source number. So if we have a logic in there in our APL, it says if source number is greater than one, uh, we want to ask these questions. And if source number is equal to one, then we want to have this other response. Uh, well, in that case, we're using different conversational functions. And so it would be appropriate in our response condition to specify the logic, uh, you know, response, or sorry, source number. If in this case, you would say response condition is source number equal to one. Uh, we're going to do API to invoke get recommendation, response notify uh, success. That's the end of it. Done. Um, in the other case, we might do we might put the the alternate where uh, source number is greater than one in our response condition. We create a whole new dialogue for this, and in that dialogue, we would spell out uh, the actions that follow, uh, and that would be an example of what happens when that other response condition is true. Mm -hmm. uh, in that case, we have a different uh, dialogue act involved, as so we need to create multiple dialogues and specify when each. Uh, dialogue act applies in that response condition. So, is that helpful? Is that like help explain things with some visuals? Yeah, I think I think visuals would be really helpful there because um, it's a lot to unpack, and I'm sure like you know the mental model, like I think it would help build that mental model. Um, I don't know if I can like. If you try sharing your screen, I don't know what'll happen if if I'll be able to capture it and show it. Um, I can try that. It's going to be a little tricky to sort of make this up on the fly completely, mm -hmm. uh, just because we're dealing with uh, a bunch of hypothetical dialogues and situations that don't exist. Mm -hmm. So it may take. Some, let me. I can try. You know what? Maybe maybe what we should do is hold off on creating the visuals and like do like a follow up thing, um, like, um, yeah, like maybe we could do in the Slack channel for the hackathon, like, uh, do like a hey, here's that question, here's the visuals for it, and then maybe we like next week, or in the next couple of weeks, we could do something where oh, I got an idea office hours we can maybe have you come on during office hours and you can present like hey that question that i was you know that thing we were talking about with the, the conditionals um here's here's that I and mean, we can give you like you know 10 15 minutes during office hours to to go through it i think that would be awesome yeah i'd be happy to do that let's definitely chat okay uh, and figure out how we can do that i think there might be some benefit to uh publishing it in like a some type of a blog post or some other format too but we can take that yeah uh you know, and figure out what's best for everybody. So. Yeah, yeah, I think I think that's good. So everyone, all everyone who's paying, you know, uh, watching the audience, you know, you're you're witnessing us come up with uh, some deliverables for you to help uh, learn about Alexa conversations right here live. So you're seeing how the sausage is made. <laughs> so that is what you're interested in. Yes. <laughs> 
So yeah, you can you can see like you know we we're we're being responsive to to our customers' needs as far as you know what information they need in order to be able to build successfully. So uh, yeah, please keep your questions coming, and we will continue to make um, you know content to help you so and answer your questions. And uh, yes, in the chat, uh, Gustav was asking about like how do I get started with Alexa, and so I shared out some links. Um, I shared out the uh, build engaging skills with Alexa. So that one teaches you how to build Alexa uh, skills with the traditional intent and utterance based um, uh, approach. And then the second one uh, is how to use Alexa conversations, which is what we're covering uh, today with uh, the pet match example. So, um, you know, I would suggest uh, going through both because it's very handy to know the, um, the two different ways. Um, the if you want to participate in the hackathon, Alexa Conversations is a requirement. So you definitely need to learn how to build with Alexa Conversations in order to be eligible. So, um, you know, starting out as a first time uh, Alexa skill builder. I don't know, Sam, I'd like, I'm curious to, to, to hear your thoughts on this, but like, you know, if, you know, the question is like, what would you start first with if you've never built anything on Alexa before? Would you start with, uh, you know, Alexa conversations or would you learn the intent and utterance base um, setup? And so I think there's advantages of, of both. So like, you know, one of the advantages of starting with Alexa conversations first is you don't have to unlearn what you've already learned for the intent and utterance base paradigm. There are some overlaps like slots and th some things, but like it's, it's different. So there's a lot of stuff that you'd have to learn. Um, and so, you know, I think, I think it might be easier if you start off with LX conversations first and then learn interaction, the, the interaction model, the utterance and intent based approach. Sam, what, what is your thought on that? I'll, so I'll give my opinion and I'll preface this by saying, you know, I, before Alexa conversations worked uh, on a lot of different Alexa projects, but didn't work so much with custom skills and so actually came into this project uh, sort of starting fresh with uh, Alexa conversations to some extent and um, my view on it is sort of it mirrors yours Justin coming from if, if you are already well versed in custom skills that's great um, and the questions you're going to have are a little different from somebody who's new to skills entirely by starting with Alexa conversations, I think whether you start with Alexa conversations or custom skills, you're going to be starting with the you know the more basic features and then moving into these more advanced features. Uh, and because custom skills is a a little more mature platform, right? We're still in beta. There are some features in custom skills you're not going to have access to yet in conversations. But because of because if you're if you're you know brand new to skill building, uh, that's not necessarily going to affect you right away. I agree with you, Justin. If you start in Alexa conversations and then move over to uh, custom custom skill building, and I, and I do think eventually you will want to learn both, um, it will make uh, things a little easier for you. Is sort of my opinion. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I I echo that. Like I think you know the like there are, there are situations that Alexa conversations is more is is better suited to than uh, the intent and utterance based system. And then there are some cases where Alexa conversations is like using a, um, uh, what's, what's, I'm, I'm trying to use that analogy uh, where you're, you're using something way too big to, to, for, for the problem that you're trying to solve. Right. So it's like, you're, you're trying to use a, a hammer to drive in a screw. Um, so like, you know, for like a, a simple, like one off thing where it's like, Hey, um, you know, turn off the uh, turn on the lights. Turn off the lights. You don't need Alexa conversations for for something that simple, or you know, putting into like a practical example. Say you have a skill that um, you know allows you to like order your previous order again, um, or like uh, create a whole new order. So those are two different things, right? And so uh, if you're just reordering your previous order, there's nothing really that you need to to um, to collect right it's just like oh yeah i would just i just want the same thing send me the same thing uh, you don't really need to have a, a back and forth multi-turn interaction for that 
But if you wanted to then create a whole new order where there's lots of different ambiguity, um, you have uh, a lot of different things that you're going to be collecting. There's a possibility that you might be like, oh, actually, you know what? I want to change my mind. I want to change that option for this option instead. Um, and so in that case, Alexa Conversations makes a lot of sense. So you can kind of see even within the same skill, there's opportunities for using uh, Alexa Conversations and uh, an intent and utterance-based interaction model. So uh, Alexa Conversations enables you to be able to uh, hand off between uh, the interaction model and we call that delegation so when you delegate you set a target so when you go from Alexa conversations to a skill you delegate uh, and uh, to skill and then when you're going from your uh, skill from the interaction model to Alexa conversations you delegate to uh, Amazon dot conversations and so uh, next week when uh, Nathan Grice comes on who is the author of for the uh, of the uh, pizza reference skill uh, he has a he wrote his skill in such a way that the interaction model Alexa conversations is not the default dialogue manager and then when it the skill opens up it asks you some questions and then based upon your answer uh, it's going to um, delegate to the uh, Alexa conversations part of the skill so uh, if you want to customize one of the um, specials um, you tell it which special and then it delegates to Alexa Conversations and then handles all of the complex parts of ordering the pizza. So uh, yeah, to Sam's point, like there is a point where, you know, if you start with Alexa Conversations, there is a point where it would be really advantageous for you to go and learn uh, the uh, traditional uh, utterance and uh, intent-based interaction model because you can do some really cool stuff by combining the two together. And uh, let's see, Gold Zulu has a comment, or uh, let's see, I believe the key skill to acquire is handoff between Alexa Conversations and Custom Skill. Then you can sort of have the best of both worlds. Yes, I agree. Um, and the example that I was talking about, where it's like you have, you know, your easy, uh, you know, your your order where you're reporting, your it's easy because you're just saying, hey, uh, I want to do the exact same thing I did before. It's all been predetermined, uh, so. You know it's not predetermined previously decided that this is the thing because i ordered it in the past uh, and then you know having the other part that goes through and handles all the the ambiguities behind ordering something uh, is a good use case for that sam do you have any other things that you'd like to add or i just agree i i think uh yeah gold zulu hits the nail on the head and uh I think you know both platforms or both options will continue to grow in terms of the features available and the different uh, types of use cases that they can tackle really effectively. But knowing both will put you in a really strong position. Cool. Yeah. And uh, earlier, the the light build successful message popped up, so we're getting towards the end of uh, the model training here. So um, should be any moment now, uh, and that we'll be able to test. And so yeah, if you have any other further questions, please uh, ask away and we will answer. So as you can see today, you know, we're at an hour and 40 minutes, and we are done with modules five and six. We just have now to test once the model has finished training. So um, again, you know, pointing out, you know, on Monday, or sorry, Tuesday, uh, one of the reasons why we went four and a half hours was not only were we answering people's questions, but, uh, you know, we were going through and explaining each and every piece of the, the puzzle as we were building it and you know we had a lot of stuff to build in the beginning but once we've built all of that stuff out we're able to easily add new things now if we were to make this more complex yes it would take a little bit longer to build all those other pieces but once you get like the core functionality built like it didn't take us that long at all to create another api definition another utterance set and another response uh in order to be able to um complete the model for um, 
adding in that other turn of dialogue where we're able to ask for a description. So, yeah, and I think this like speaks to the point, right? You know, if we think about most skills, they may have a few different sort of distinct core features, like uh, you know, recommend a dog and check my existing recommended dogs, remove like a recommended dog and maybe like save this recommendation. Let's say those are our features. Uh, well, they're all kind of correlated. And so once you lay out for, for each core feature, at least once you lay out the base, like we did on Tuesday, um, you know, adding these incremental features that are, you know, really delightful as a user and, and really can add a lot of wow factor on top of that, that base is really, really streamlined. Uh, and so, like we were talking about on, uh, on Tuesday, once you put in that work up front, then everything gets really fast. Right. And uh, the build music, uh, not build music, sorry, I, I read uh, Oxygen Box's comment while I was speaking. So Oxygen Box says you need the uh, Jeopardy music while waiting for the training to complete. And uh, it just completed. So we have a full build successful, I think, uh, there we go. Our our lovely faces were in front of that message, but you can see it there. It's full build successful. So um, yeah, we're ready to test. And so um, I've one thing I got to remember to do is when we go to our test tab, I'm going to leave this code tab open. Um, let me close these. Um, we need to activate and deactivate the skill because remember we changed the invocation name from pet match to dog uh, to dog match which is what we wanted it to be yesterday and then once we got disconnected from the um we were talking too long and so our session expired and so when i logged back in i forgot to change it as i repasted in the um interaction model json so now that i've deactivated and reactivated it we should be able to say open uh dog match Welcome to Pet Match. Okay. I can find the best dog for you. What size of dog are you looking for? So I'm going to say I want a large dog. Would you like a family dog or a guard dog? I'll go with family this time. Typed in family. <laughs> Would you prefer a high energy dog or a low energy dog? Let's go for high. I recommend. Hey, what's that? The Weimaraner is a large dog that was originally bred for hunting games such as deer, bear, cool. and boar in 19th century Germany. They are high energy dogs that need a lot of exercise and play time. Weimaraners come in shades of charcoal blue to silver gray and can weigh from 55 to 88 pounds. Cool. So we were able to get our response back. And uh, if you remember, where is our um, description coming from? It's coming from our. Um, our data that we have here in this petmatch.json file. So you can see here, here's our description. And so for every single one of the uh, dogs that we have listed here, we have the description. So, um, you know, we can, uh, when in our code, what we're doing is we're building up the key based upon the arguments, uh, energy, size, and temperament, and we pass it to our data. And then uh, our data object we defined up here is loading in the petmatch.json file. And then we're able to access that description by saying, what's our response that came back from the data, that description, and that gives it to us. And so then once we were, uh, send that back, we're able to, um, you know, Alexa Conversations uses that template to paste in uh, and substitute the uh, description that we gave into the response. And uh, I printed this out and uh, to the um, console. So we can actually take a look at what the response looks like. And so to do that in Alexa hosted, you would click on the logs, Amazon CloudWatch, and it will open up uh, the uh, CloudWatch management console for you. And you can view this. Um, I know, I'm not sure who it was, but somebody like was mentioning that they were in, this was in the Slack channel, but they were located in uh, Ireland and it was messing up like their region. So they had to go here and change uh, the region. I'm not sure which region they ended up having to change it to, but once they changed it to the appropriate region, then it would show them the, the appropriate log stream. So if you're outside of the US and you're not, like if you come here and you um, don't see the anything logging, 
uh, chances are you just need to change the region that you're in in order to view it. So, um, cool. So I'm clicking on the top log green group because that's the most recent one. And you can see here we have our log here, the get description API handler. And this is the response that came back. So API response, description, and there's the text that we read out. And um, you can see also here's our incoming request. It's dialog.api invoked. We have our get recommendation. We have our arguments, large family high, and we have our slot values as well. So um, this is uh, the information that is sent to the back of our skill. And um, let's see, there's one thing also I wanted to do here. Let's uh, test this out and say, what about, what did I go before? I went with large, right? So what about a small dog? Okay, after changing large to small, I recommend in Basenji. So that's pretty cool. You know, we didn't have to script that one out. So we had, did you want to, you want to say something, Sam? Yeah, yeah, I just wanted to call out here. This is actually a great example of You've accidentally done this, but one of the examples, right, of not having to match perfectly to your utterance sets and having some of that mapping is mm. we forgot to write the word about, um, but we still have coverage for that anyway um, because because of the yeah you get that basically yeah I accidentally typed what a small dog instead of asking about what a small dog what about a small dog so it was able to recognize that um, and then on top of that. Uh, we had dialogue one and dialogue zero. If we go back to the uh, our dialogue, uh, let's go to dialogue one first. Dialogue one, we have what is that, and it's happening after this match. Uh, but if we go to dialogue um, zero, we don't have a what about uh, what is that in this dialogue. We just have the you know context um, uh, the where we provide context to the context carryover. So like. You know, after changing x to y, you get and then the new value. So, um, you know, even though we didn't define that scenario in this dialog, they're not silos. So I can now also say, well, it is that. And based upon the context, the it's going to give me the description for Africa the Basenji and, and not for uh, the Weimar honor. It has an alert. So I'm going to go ahead and mute that. So I, um, I'm not talking over it, but like. As you can see, this is pretty cool. Like we didn't have to go through and define this scenario. We get it for free um, because Alexa Conversations is uh, tracking the conversational context for us. Um, and so if you look at our backend code, all we're doing is providing a handler that handles the get recommendation API and the get description API. And Alexa Conversations knows what's it, what information to pass to these uh, endpoint, these APIs that we defined in our endpoint. Um, and, you know, it figures out what information to pass to it and which templates to pass to it. Um, and so you can kind of see this demonstrates the, 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 the power of Alexa Conversations and the benefits it brings because you don't have to write that code that manages that state. Yeah. Cool. Uh, I think we have a couple comments here in the chat. Um... Let's see. So we got yeah. Tim Tim To T says leveraging Lex Conversations infrastructure for a chatbot on a website. Does that sound a reasonable case, or is this only suited for voice applications? Yes, it's uh, suited for voice applications. There is a way how to like um, like embed Alexa uh, into a browser. So you could like have um, you know a voice assistant in the browser that you could speak to that you know could activate the skill with um i forget the name it was announced at alexa live the uh, alexa links um which allows you to like be able to invoke and activate a skill from like a link that you click on in a browser and so uh that could be something that you could do as a vector to do that so um yes you would you would still need to use lex conversations as a uh as a voice uh, interface, but there are ways to make it available on your website. Um, and uh, there's a there's a really cool uh, testing simulator called EchoSim. If you go to EchoSim.io, this is um, if you log in with your Amazon account, you can actually play with the Echo uh, and speak to the Echo device as if it was you know a physical device, but it's in your browser. 
um, in the testing simulator here, we can also press and, and hold uh, on the microphone and you know speak to the skill and it will interpret what you say. Um, but there are other options of, of how you would embed uh, that experience into your website. Um, let's see. Somebody must have asked a question about Alexa hosted because W. Giorgio says, yes, that is just for our hosted skills. Not quite sure. That might have been in relation to me talking about the um, the region, if you're outside of the U.S. That's what it was. Uh, Gold Zulu says, Justin Jeffers has invented a shortcut way to speak, just like in the text we say OMG or BRB. Soon in speech, Alexa will have shortcuts too. I guess he's re referring to the... Uh, what a what a small dog. <laughs> um, and then uh, Ghostbag Zach says, nice stuff. I just finished module four and hopped in here. Oh, that's nice. That's the perfect timing. Uh, this is pretty fun and definitely will require some planning to fit the tech into my needs. But I can see this reducing work needed by 60%. Well, I'm glad you see the, the benefits and the values in this. And, um, you know, um, yeah, it's it's one of those things where like not only will I think it reduce your 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 work necessary, but I think it will also be able to open up new um, possibilities that you weren't able to achieve before, or would have been possible without Alexa conversations, but would have required a lot more work. And you get to this point where it's like, wait a minute, like I've I've hit that part of the graph where it's too much work to justify doing it, so I'm just gonna not do it, right? So, um, you know. Alexa conversations will will help solve and be that that take on that burden of doing that uh, that heavy work for you, so that way you can unlock new uh, capabilities that you know you couldn't do before in your skills. I just want to jump in here too, Justin. Uh, completely like super excited to hear this. I think that's awesome. Way to go! But uh, also just want to use this as an opportunity to talk about my favorite topic. It seems like on the screen, which is. Uh, the importance of of thinking about your API design as you get started. Yes. One of the made today so easy for us, and Justin, if you flip over to uh, dog, I think dogfinder.json, petmatch.json, uh, the sort of our you know mock API, right? Reason we've been able to more or less without making any significant changes, add this second API, pull our description. Uh, without make doing any you know real significant changes to our skill code uh, has been because we thought about how we could organize and and get this information uh, from from our API ahead of time to make it easier for ourselves uh, to do that based on the way people are going to be asking for and when. So thinking about you know how is your data going to be structured, uh, how are your APIs going to be able to be called, uh, what are they going to return? when they get a certain value. Thinking about those things ahead of time will allow you to really harness that. Right, and and to that point, like in this example, um, we are using the, um, you know, we're not actually calling an external API. We're just uh, loading this JSON file into memory and accessing that data. But there's nothing stopping us from wrapping this behind an API gateway in a Lambda function that's gonna return back based upon uh, the parameters that are passed to it so uh you know in a real world situation you can think of like you know that you could you know call and uh, an make a, an api call that calls that data and returns it um the the and, and to sam's point like you know think about how your apis re relate to your uh overall skill design because you might figure out like oh hey i've got these existing apis but uh i'm going to need another like uh, I'm going to need an API that verifies information. I'm going to need a, an API that does various tasks. And so you might find that, oh, I had this set of APIs that works great for um, communication between two systems, like two computers. But now I need a, an, an API that's going to massage this data in a way that uh, makes it uh, presentable for voice. So there's a bunch of different other things that you'll think about while building this. And so you might also um, have to build new APIs uh, to to handle that, and so by APIs, I don't mean API definition in Alexa, like uh, conversations. Like you'll need that for every API that you call. But what I'm saying is, your your backend, you might have to create new APIs that didn't exist in your backend uh, to that are optimized for voice or that help uh, you know 
provide something that you didn't need when you were um, building something for uh, you know a communication between two systems. Um, let's see, Ghostbag Zach says um, definitely this is a perfect. This is a project I gave up on last year due to the need to account for the utterance possibilities and the path growth. Yeah, so that combinatorial explosion that happens of all the different like ways that a dialogue could progress um, is is very daunting and very hard to get right. And you know you can never actually one hundred percent get it right if you're you know because you know there's <laughs> it's almost infinite the the many of ways that it could uh, deviate. And so the AI assist that you get really really helps um, handle. Uh, those cases. It's not going to be 100% perfect, but it's going to be a lot better than just doing it manually. Cool. Well, we're right at two hours, and um, you know we got the skill built out. We were able to test and show that not only are we able to you know provide the contextual uh, response, we're able to you know. Lex Conversations knows which description it is that we're talking about while we're going through. And so you can see like how, um, you know, you can really see the, the power of Lex Conversations and what it's doing for you here and taking care of managing that conversational state. And um, so you get a more natural interaction um, with less backend code. There's a little bit more upfront planning that you have to do, but uh, you know, you get uh, a lot of flexibility right out of the box. And um, I, um, so I know we're close to two hours. We got a couple more questions that popped up. So let's go ahead and, and answer those and then we will call it a stream. So um, we got uh, Tim Toe says, last question, is there uh, API access for Alexa Conversations? If I want to build a white label solution where I want my clients to use conversation, Alexa Conversations in a more domain specific manner, can I expose my UI calling Alexa Conversations? So um, from what I, I'm seeing here is like, Sam, do you want to, I mean, I have, I, my, I want to say no. <laughs> not right now. Um, once SD, you know, by the time before, is right now it's in beta uh, between, the, before the time that it goes to GA, you can definitely uh, expect SDK support to come in, and so if that, uh, I don't know that that will help enable this use case, but that is something that's coming. I think the answer here is is no, definitely not today. Yeah, I definitely want to capture this question and see if uh, I can bring it back to the team and ask them what their thoughts and their opinions are and and get some information that I can possibly share with you all. But um, the, yeah, at this time, I would say, I would say no, but you're still in beta. So cool. All right. Well, um, let me uh, bring this back over here. So, oh, actually, before I do that, in closing, I just want to remind everyone uh, there is the uh, Alexa Skills Challenge that's going on at this moment. And so if you're not registered, uh, please do. Uh, there's, oops, I went to the wrong page. I should have gone home. Um, the, you know, there are some prize money that you can receive for uh, participating and also for uh, if you win. So if you go down to the prizes section, there's $101,000 uh, in prizes that we're giving away for the different categories. Um, and you can... Uh, take a look at that. There's also a Slack group that you can join that's associated with the, um, if you go to the resources tab, uh, you can sign up for the Slack channel. And if you have any questions, uh, you can go into there and ask away. Uh, every Wednesday, we're doing an AMA. So uh, you can go um, at 9 a.m. Pacific time. And um, on Wednesday, we had uh, Jeff Nunn, uh, who is our resident Python expert. And so he was in there answering Python related questions. Um, you know, I'd like to get Sam in there sometime uh, on an AMA asking people's questions. I'm going to have Nathan in there at some point answering people's questions. Uh, Nathan Grice, you haven't met him yet, but he'll be on the next stream uh, next Tuesday. Um, so if uh, another thing that we have in the resources section is this uh, contest office hours schedule. So clicking that takes you to this page and it says, you know, 
office hours, but there's more in here than just office hours. As you can see, we've got uh, Tuesdays and today's stream on uh, Pet Match. But next week on the 25th and the 27th from 10 to 11, it says an hour. I'm not sure if it'll only be an hour. It might go long, um, but we're going to be covering uh, the pizza ordering uh, skill. So uh, this is going to be um, like if you think of the streams that uh, Sam and I have done over these past two days um, as the 101 to Alexa Conversations, you can think of the pizza ordering skill as the 300 level um, offering for uh, Alexa Conversations. So this is going to take your knowledge that you've built today, that foundational knowledge, and hoist it up and stretch it to um, help you understand some more complicated scenarios like being able to call different APIs. In fact, like, you know, if you want to get a head start, there is a template that you can use to create the skill and then you can like look through and walk through yourself. Um, so if I go to the, oops, I got logged out. Um, because we've been talking so long. Um, <laughs> If I go to create a new skill, and uh, we'll just say pizza reference, and we will select Node.js, go to create a skill. On this next page, we can uh, choose a template. Right here, there is the pizza ordering example template. And if I create that, uh, it will create the interaction, or not the interaction model, it'll create the Alexa uh, conversations model for me and that model will have all the different dialogue and all the different things and you can actually uh, go through it and see how the um, dialogues were, were built out so that way um, you know you can see like oh look they're calling invoke api in several different cases here oh they're calling this invoke api to because the the there's an example um it's going to take a little bit for this to spin up but like part way through the conversation the customer wants some clarification on how many people a pizza could uh, of a certain size could um, could feed. So it's like, oh, how many uh, people can a medium-sized pizza feed? And then what happens is it calls an API and gets that information for for you. So um, and then at the end, you know, it it allows you to place an order. So um, I would highly recommend that you take a look at that. Um, there's a lot going on there. Um, and so we're going to be covering that next week. But if you want to get that head start, go in here, create that template, and then the code for it, while you can view it in the Alexa hosted skill um, in the code tab, you can also get to it by going to uh, github.com slash Alexa, and then going into the uh, Alexa cookbook, and let me make this bigger. And then under feature demos, I will paste the link in the chat too, so don't worry. Um, Alexa conversations, and then there's the pizza reference skill. So this is the source code. You go to index.js. You can take a look at how this is done, and I will copy and paste this into the chat. So there you go. Um, and yeah, this is going to take a little bit. Um, I don't think we should wait for it. <laughs> um, we'll be talking about this next uh, Tuesday the 25th. So thanks again for tuning in. And my name is Justin Jeffress. And thank you. And uh, Sam, uh, thanks for being here. Thanks for all of your support. And it was great collaborating with you on this project. And uh, I'll, I'll let you say a few words here in closing, and then we'll sign off. Yeah, thank you, Justin. It's been a pleasure to come on. It was you know, a pleasure to work on the pet match. And uh, thank you, everybody, for tuning in, asking great questions. Uh, I hope this has been helpful, and I look forward to seeing all of you in uh, the Hackathon Slack. So talk soon. Yeah. All right. Thank you very much. And until next time, we'll be active in the Slack. <laughs>